critical moment in Peter's life as well, you know, as he's saying how much he's going to die for Jesus and everything like that. And he's sort of put back in his place when he realizes he doesn't uh, uh, do it in the face of danger. Uh, so it's a good reminder for us that, you know, even the best of us sometimes um, uh, and, uh, can be humbled uh, in this way. But what I want to sort of uh, talk about today and compare it in the three, the four Gospels is generally this story of Peter denying the Lord uh, three times, as is known, uh, is used as a way for people to uh, sort of uh, point out a contradiction amongst the four Gospels. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the contradiction of the three denials of Peter. And uh, people will say, well, see, here's a contradiction between the different Gospels that don't line up. Who's heard of it? Put your hand up if you've heard of the contradiction. Tell me you have. Put your, leave your hand up if you know the answer. You know the answer, okay. Were you there when I preached that night? Ah, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, you're going to hear it again. <laughs> Philippa was there when, when I preached it at Lighthouse. So, okay, so it would be an interesting sermon for you. I don't know, um, maybe you haven't heard of the contradiction, but we'll go through it and then I will show you what uh, they try and say is a contradiction. And as we go into it a bit further, you'll see that it isn't a contradiction um, <coughs> as you study it in each of the four Gospels. So in Matthew 26, I just want to start here at verse 69 and read to... Um, Sorry, verse uh, 31, actually. Let's go a bit further up. Uh, let's start here in verse uh, 31. So this is Matthew 26, verse 31. And the reason why I want to start here is most people know of Peter being the one saying, you know, I'm going to die with you, and then later on he denies Jesus three times. But what I want to point out here is it wasn't only Peter to, to make that claim. Uh, it says here, Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. So that's where, you know, Peter starts sort of talking up and saying how he's going to stand with Jesus no matter what. Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. So that's, a, that's three times, right? So you have twice and then thrice is three. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. But look at this. Likewise also said all the disciples. So isn't that interesting? I don't know if you know that, but it wasn't only Peter that made that claim that he would die with Jesus. All the disciples made that claim. And yet, you know, it's just Peter that is used as the example later on. He actually is the one that denies him three times. Um, but later on, uh, the disciples, when they were with Jesus, they all fled as well. So it's not just Peter that is making this claim, but he is actually held to it and made an example in the scriptures. Let's go down uh, to uh, verse 69. Uh, verse 69. Because uh, we go where, where Jesus is arrested and he's taken away. I just want to get to the uh, point where uh, Peter is actually uh, in the palace and um, where the denials happen. So, you know, if you remember, Jesus is taken, you know, he's betrayed by Judas, he's taken, and they, they take him for that trial that happens throughout the night to Caiaphas. And then Peter is uh, now, uh, you know, sitting without at the fire, right? And then this is where the denials happen. So let's look at uh, Matthew uh, 26 from verse uh, 69 to 75. It says here, Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. So there's the first denial <coughs> in, in the Gospel of Matthew. He's sitting at the fire, sat without in the palace. So just keep these things in mind. I'm just pointing them out to you. So as we go to the other Gospels, you'll see the differences. Peter sat without in the palace. So he's sitting at that fire, um, came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, so where is he now? So he was sitting, now he's gone out to the porch. Another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, 
This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. <coughs> and again, he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. So there's denial number two. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. So now they're pointing, now this is a group that is pointing out to Peter, hey, we can tell by the way you talk that you're, you're one of them, right? Uh, as, as far as I understand, the word beray is, is similar to betray. It's basically like his speech is giving him away, as we say. It's giving away the fact that you're a Galilean, you're one of them. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediate, immediately the cock crew. So where the Bible says here that he began to curse and swear, he's not saying like four-letter words, right? He's not saying, you know, if this, if that. He's cursing and swearing, saying, you know, basically he's making an oath, saying, no, as the Lord liveth or whatever, I do not know the man. He's basically making a, a stronger statement that he doesn't know Jesus Christ. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. So as you read through that account, you can see, you know, there's one denial was of the first lady. And he was sitting down, then he went out to the porch. There was the second lady. And then there was the group that was out at the porch as well, saying, hey, you know, your speech bereath you. And that was the third denial. Now let's go to Luke. <coughs> Luke uh, chapter 22, 55, and we'll read of the account here. Uh, Luke 22, 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. So remember in Matthew, it says he was sat down without in the palace. When it says he was without, it's because Jesus was in a different room, right? And he was outside of that room where the fire was. But I believe he could still see what was happening within that room. Peter sat down among them, but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. And he denied him saying, woman, <coughs> I know him not. So he denied, when he says saying he denied him, it's not calling the lady a him, it's saying he denied Jesus, saying, woman, I know him not. Now we can safely assume that that's probably the same woman that he denied when he was sitting at the fire of Matthew. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. So who, this is now not that second lady, right? So remember he went out to the porch and a lady, another damsel came to him and said, You're with him, and he denied. But this now is actually a different denial, right? So it says here, Thou art also one of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. So in Luke's account, you have a woman and then you have a man, and he's not out. There's, there's no, it's nothing about the porch yet. So you might start to think, well, maybe I know what the answer is, because now you can start to think, hey, there are actually more than three denials. I don't know if you guys knew that. So, you know, a lot of people know the three denials of Peter, but even from these two accounts, we see, hey, there were two ladies and then a group, and then in Luke, there's a lady, a man, and now the group. So we see that there are more, actually, he actually has denied Jesus more than three times. Uh, man, I'm not. And about the space of one hour after another, after, uh, uh, about the space of one hour after, another confidently affirmed, saying, of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. So we can, I reckon we can safely assume that this person was maybe part of that group that was saying, your speech berayeth you. Because he's saying, hey, you know, I, I, we can hear this guy, you know, of a truth, this fellow also is with him, for he is a Galilean. So somehow he can tell that Peter is a Galilean. And Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. Now this is an interesting little tidbit that we get in Luke 22 that we don't get in the other Gospels. Verse 61 it says, And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice and Peter went out and wept bitterly. So this is an interesting point here that you know, it, perhaps in Luke's account when the cock actually crew this time and Peter had denied this time it was actually the Lord Jesus from the other room 
turning to him and looking at him in the face and that actually making Peter realize that this had come to pass, that he had actually denied the Lord. Just imagine how Peter would have felt, you know, like, you know, not long ago in the garden, he's saying that he's going to die with Jesus. Jesus is arrested and that same night, you know, when the cock is crowing, he's denying him, not even realizing, as we see later on in Mark, that the cock is crowing, but it's not until actually the Lord looks at Peter that he realizes that he has actually done what Jesus said he was going to do. And, and this can apply as well in our spiritual life in the sense that we often get into sin. We often are, you know, with our actions, we are denying the Lord Jesus. And we get to the point where we don't really think he's paying attention. We don't think he's looking. And this is a reminder here that the Lord is always watching. The Lord is always with you. Even when you're at work, you know, you may be slacking off, you may not be doing the right thing. The Lord is always watching you. It's a good reminder for you to, to re remember that. You know, you may be, you know, in your room, on your computer, looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. You need to remember, hey, the Lord is there with you. He knows, he sees what you're doing. He, he can read your thought life. And, you know, when we are in sin, we think that we are getting away from the Lord. We do see, we see later on Peter doing some silly things as um, you know, he is just you know, getting further and further into sin and not realizing that the Lord is still paying attention to him because he's, think, he's probably thinking that Jesus is busy, right? Jesus is busy getting judged in the other room. And yet at the same time, when Jesus is going through all that, he still has Peter on his mind to the point where when Peter has, is denying him in the other room, he looks over and, and still sees him. He knows that he's there where Peter doesn't realize that um, the Lord knows that. The Lord is aware that he is there. Um, now let's go to uh, <coughs> Mark. So, so far we've sort of learned, we can see, okay, the stories are a little bit different in the sense that, hey, you know, there, we're starting to see there is actually more than three denials. But at the same time, there's no contradiction in the sense, in the sense that, you know, Jesus did not say he would deny him only three times. But at the same time, they, the, the two accounts in Matthew and Luke, the denials have occurred before the cock crows, right? So you would have counted the two ladies, the group, and then the cock crows. And then again in Luke, you've got the lady, the man, and then that other man that said, hey, you're a Galilean, and then the cock crows. Now Mark is where people start to point out that there is a contradiction. And I'll show you here in Mark. So the account here in Mark is, a, is slightly different. Let's read to verse 72. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. So there's the first denial. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And a maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou, thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. And the second time the cock crew. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. So again, we have two ways that Jesus has said to Peter. You know, did he say it two different ways? You know, that's how we would align these up. That not only did Jesus say to Peter that before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice, but he also said to Peter before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. Sort of going back to um, the point that... Um, Kevin made in his resurrection sermon, how we are, get, we are getting more information here about what the Lord actually said to Peter. But where people point out this contradiction, if you see here uh, in verse, um, uh, where is it? Let's go back up to 66. So here, and as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest, and when she saw Peter warming himself, um, so this is the first denial. But he denied, verse 68, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And when he went out into the porch and the cock crew. So the contradiction that they try and point out is in Mark, there is actually one denial and then the cock crows. And then there are two more denials and then the cock crows later. Um, but in Matthew and Luke, we see three denials and then a cock crow. 
So what they would say is, well, how does then Mark fulfill Matthew and Luke? Because in Mark, he said, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But in Matthew and Luke, he's saying, hey, before the cock even crows, you would have already denied me three times. So after we put these three uh, passages together, you'll get uh, a picture that looks a bit like this. So we see in Matthew, we see in verse 69, the damsel is the first denial. Then he goes out to the porch. Then there's the maid and then the group and then the cock crows. And then in Luke, you'll see the maid. And even if we say, okay, we're not, we're not, we don't mention the porch at all, but we know the man was in the group because he says you're a Galilean. Um, let's say we put even the man before the porch. That's still only two denials before the first cock crow in Mark. So we've got the maid in verse 56, the man in verse 58, and then another man in the group in verse 59. Um, and then in verse 60, we have the cock crow. Then in Mark, in, in, verse, uh, in chapter 14, we've got the maid, but then as soon as he goes out to the porch, the cock crows. So there's only one denial before that cock crows. And then you have uh, the maid in verse 69, and then the group again that's mentioned in verse 70, and then the cock crows. So even if you allow for Luke 22 to have two denials, um, it's still not before the cock crows. Because they'll say, you know, well, you know, even if you give that, you know, Jesus said before the cock crows twice, you'll deny me three times. Um, that still wasn't the case. Uh, that was the case in Mark, but in Luke and Matthew, it's clear that he says, you'll have to deny me three times before the cock crows. And I'll just show you that uh, here. So uh, let's go back. And uh, we will go to uh, Luke 22. Verse 34. So there's a couple of explanations that I've heard on the internet. Um, one is obviously the position that we would not take, which is that the Bible is just, you know, a written testimony of men and therefore it can contradict. And they'll just say, hey, this is just one of those things where it contradicts because it was just an account of men. And when men give an account, sometimes they account wrong. Obviously, we would not accept that as an explanation because we believe the Bible is the word of God and it doesn't contradict. Another explanation I've heard is that they give the example of, say, for example, like a basketball game where people will say, hey, well, you know, after the buzzer, uh, I'll meet you at the, at the hot dog stand or whatever. And the context of that conversation they'll say is, well, we know that when somebody says the buzzer, they mean the very last buzzer of the game and then at, after the last buzzer is when you know you you would meet at that hot dog stand even though there are multiple buzzers within that game because there might be a, a buzzer after the first quarter then the second quarter then the third quarter but if somebody says to you hey after the buzzer i'm going to meet you at that at the at, at the hot dog stand then you would know that what they meant by that is the very last buzzer so then they would say something like, well, even though Jesus said before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice, they would know by the context, you know, just an argument from silence, that he meant the very last crow of the day. And they would say that's how they align, you know, Matthew, Mark and Luke, because even though there were crows before all three denials happened, or before all the denials happened, it happened all before the very last cock crow. Now, those don't really fit um, the last explanation um, is that the cock crow is simply a time of the day. So they'll, and it's similar to the basketball analogy where they'll say the cock crow is not actually an animal crowing. It's just a specific time of the day, the cock crow, like we would consider the evening. And, and he's just denying him before that evening comes. So even though he's denying him throughout the evening, he can still say he's denied him before the cock crow because the evening has not yet passed. And that's another explanation where the cock crow, it's not assuming it's the very last cock crow, but it's just assuming that it's a period of time. And as long as the denials happen before that period of time ends, then they can say he's denied him before the cock crow. Now, the reason why I don't accept, obviously, the first explanation is because the Bible is a testimony of God. It's not the word of man, and therefore it should not contradict. Um, the reason why I don't expect 
uh, I don't accept the basketball game example is because that needs to be read into the passage as well as the cock crow. It needs to be assumed that the, the cock crowing that he's referring to is the time of the day as opposed to a rooster actually crowing. But when you read Luke 22 and you also read it um, in John later on, you'll see here that the denials must happen before the first cock crow. Why? Because Jesus says here, and he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. So it's pretty clear in Luke 23 that Jesus is actually saying, hey, before the cock even crows the first time, it won't even crow, you have, would have denied me three times. So the three denials need to happen at least before the first cock crow in Mark, if you remember here, that happened on the porch. But we see here at the most, two only happened in Luke 22. So how do we reconcile these differences? Well, the, the secret source is in uh, the Gospel of John. And I'll show you here that the Gospel of John actually gives quite a different account to um, Matthew, Mark and Luke. Um, I want to just show you here as well that this passage in Luke 22, verse 34, is the same in John 13, 38, where Jesus says here, so this is before John 14, 15, 16, 17, where Jesus is saying a lot of words to the disciples. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. So again, not jiving that, hey, the cock crow is the very last cock crow of the day, and it doesn't work that if it's a period of time, because that means the cock is already crowing in that period of time, and yet the three denials have not happened yet. So the three denials, according to these passages, must happen before the very first cock crowing. So let's go to John uh, 18, where we will start to see uh, these different... Um, uh, denials, but we'll read through uh, from chapter one because I want to show you a couple of things that happened in the garden. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook, brook Cedron, <coughs> where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. So this is the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane that he's at where you know, that he's asking his disciples to, to pray and watch with him. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? So isn't that interesting that you know, it even mentions here that Jesus knew everything that was going to happen. And we know that as we read through the Gospels that, you know, so this was not a shock to Jesus. He even knew, remember, when, um, when Judas went to betray him. They answered him, Jesus of, they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Now, I don't know if you've ever read that before in John chapter 18, when they asked, you know, they were asking for Jesus of Nazareth, and he says, I am he. Him actually saying to them, I am he, actually made them push them back. Isn't that interesting that the power of Jesus' word when he said, I am he, actually made them fall back? I don't know if you've ever read that before in John 18. They went backward and fell to the ground. So you imagine Jesus walks over to them. They, he says, who do you seek? They say, Jesus of Nazareth, he says, I am he. And just saying that pushes all of them to the ground. Isn't that a, an interesting sight to the eyes? Then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. It's interesting that they just say the same thing. Um, maybe kind of shocked that well, what just happened to them. Maybe they're a bit dazed. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. So he's saying to them over, because he's walked over to them, so his disciples are obviously a bit further back. He's saying to them, hey, take me and let them go, specifically that it would be fulfilled that none of the disciples are killed while Jesus is alive. 
Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it. So Simon Peter obviously is seeing that uh, Jesus is being arrested. Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. I just always find it interesting in this account of Jesus being arrested that, that the Bible gives this specific amount of detail. That Peter ran over, drew his sword, smote off the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. It's interesting that he's like, I don't know why it's the right ear and just not one of his ears. Like, is it significant that it's the right ear and not the left ear? I'm not sure. Um, but he gives some very specific details here that it's his right ear. But it even gives the name of that servant whose ear was cut off. Did you know that? I don't know if you knew that. Did you know that, that we actually know the name of the person who Peter cut the ear off. His name was Malchus. And I think we're given his name because he, he plays a, a part later on in the story. I don't know if you realize. So his right ear is cut off. His name is Malchus. He's a servant of the high priest. I won't turn in Luke, but if you read Luke's account, Jesus actually heals this man's ear. He actually touches the ear and heals it. Now, I don't know if he cut off the ear is the ear like on the ground and then Jesus like picks it up and reattaches it? Or is, when it says he cuts, cut off his ears, it's still like sort of dangling there in Jesus. Because it says in Luke that he just touched the ear and he healed him. You know, or is it that the, the, the ear is gone and maybe he's just bleeding and then he just heals him? You know, he, he stops the bleeding. I'm not sure. Uh, I know, and I think it's in Passion of the Christ where Jesus actually heals it. I think he picks it up and heals it. But we're not actually given that detail in Luke. It just says he touched his ear and healed it. But maybe since he's touching the ear, the ear must be there somewhere. Because if your ear is cut off, he's not really touching the ear. The ear is somewhere else. So this servant gets his ear cut off. It's his right ear, and his name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my father hath given me. Shall I not drink it? <coughs> then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first. For he was father-in-law to Caiaphas. Now, this is what's interesting. Because when you read the other accounts, and, I, and I, I don't know why I didn't include it in my notes, but I didn't turn there. But when you see Jesus taken away to trial, he is taken away to the palace of Caiaphas. If you remember, Caiaphas is one of the high priests. Now, Annas and Caiaphas were both high priests at the same time. And this is why I can refer to both of them as the high priest. But he is taken away to Caiaphas, the palace of Caiaphas, and that's where he is judged in, in the judgment hall. Now, what's interesting about the account in John 18 is that it tells us here that Jesus, before being taken to Caiaphas, is actually taken to Annas's house first, before he is taken to Caiaphas. So he says, and he led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another. Uh, and so did another disciple, that that disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. So Peter and Jesus are not yet at Caiaphas's place. And this is what we learn in the Gospel of John. Because in Matthew, Mark and Luke, it's just Jesus is taken off to Caiaphas to get judged. And then Peter follows. And then remember, Peter sits down at the fire without inside that palace watching Jesus getting judged. But in John 18, we now see a different story where Jesus is actually first, we learn that Jesus is first taken to Annas' house and then John and Peter are following. Now it says here that, uh, uh, let's see, I followed, so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple which was known unto the high priest and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. So what actually happens here? Jesus is being taken over to Annas first, so he's not taken to Caiaphas first. John is actually known by Annas. So John is actually let into the house because he's known by the people there. But then John comes out and tells the damsel at the door, it's sort of like, hey, he's with me. And that's why Peter is allowed into Annas' house. Are you getting the picture now? And brought in Peter. 
Here's the first denial. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. Now is this the same maid that Peter denied in the presence at that fire when he sat down at the fire? No, this is a different maid now. Eh? So if you remember, John comes out to get Peter and he says, Peter basically, I don't know if he says Peter's with me, but he let, lets Peter in. Now as Peter's entering the house, the damsel at the door says, hey, aren't you with Jesus? And he says, I'm not. That's the first denial. And the servants and officers um, stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. So remember in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, what was Peter doing when he was warming himself at the fire? He was sitting at the fire, wasn't he? But now there are servants in Annas' house and officers, they have made a fire of coals, but they are standing around this fire and Peter is standing with them also. So is this the same group that is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke? No, this is a different group that is standing around this fire, not the same group that he's sitting at uh, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Peter stood with them and warned himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews all, always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? So people assume when they see he's, he's entered into the high priest and he's answering the high priest that he's talking to Caiaphas. But at this time, Annas and Caiaphas were both the high priest. Now they shouldn't have both been the high priest because there should have only been one high priest. But at this time, they were both uh, sitting as a high priest. So he's actually talking to Annas right now. So this judgment that is happening, this conversation that is happening between Jesus and the high priest is a different conversation that Jesus has later with Caiaphas when he's actually being judged and false witnesses are being brought in. Because if you remember when Jesus stood before Caiaphas, he was silent. He didn't say anything. Why? Because he was on trial. He wasn't going to convict himself until the time came when he said, you'll see the son of man sitting on the right hand and coming in the clouds. And then they say he's spoken blasphemy. But here he's saying, hey, well, if people have said things, you know, go ask them. They heard me. You know, why are you asking me what I taught? Um, everybody knows what I taught because I didn't do it in secret. He says, answer us thou the high priest. So Jesus answered him, if I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. So you see here that this conversation happens before. So now you're getting a bit more information in the Gospel of John as we did in Matthew, Mark and Luke where he goes to the house of Annas first, bound, uh, what was it, P uh, Peter and John follow. John is allowed into the house first, comes out and gets Peter. Peter's walking into the house. That's the first denial. Then there's a conversation between Annas and Jesus and he's saying, well, you know, if I've done something wrong, then get witnesses. So then Annas takes him down to Caiaphas and that's where they try and get the false witnesses to try and accuse Jesus of, um, you know, doing something wrong. Then we go back to Peter. <coughs> Verse 25. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. So again, Peter here is standing at the fire. So this is another, again, a different incident. He is still at the house of Annas while this happens. And then, you know, later on, he probably follows uh, Jesus over to the palace of Caiaphas. So there's the second denial. One of the servants of the high priest being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. So there's the account of the three denials in the Gospel of John. And we see there that there are three denials before the cock crows. But the cock crow is actually happening prior to the events happening at Caiaphas's house. And one of the things here, remember we talked about, you know, not knowing that Jesus is watching, just doing silly things when you're getting so far into sin. Look at the extent Peter has gone to in John, where if you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, you remember he cut that servant's ear off. And we find out that that guy's name is Malchus. Now, this guy, Malchus, I don't know if you saw this when, when he's denying him at the fire. This guy, Malchus, that had his ear healed, is standing at the fire with Peter. 
You know, because he's at this fire, right? They're around the fire. And one of them says, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied and said, What? One of the servants of the high priest. This is Malchus. Being his kinsman, so the kinsman of the high priest, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? And he denies him. So Peter is really not thinking straight now where, you know, obviously this guy knows who cut his ear off because he's, somebody's cut his ear off. He probably recognized who he is. This guy had his ear healed. He's now standing around the fire with Peter and he's thinking, hey, but I saw you in the garden. You cut my ear off. You're with him. And Peter is still denying the Lord Jesus Christ, still saying that I don't know him. Um, Peter then denied again and immediately the cock crew. So that is the answer to the contradiction. So people would say, well, you know, there's a contradiction because there wasn't three denials before the cock crew. And they say, see, in Mark, you know, you've got one denial and then the cock crows. And Luke, you know, at Max, you've got two. So there's a contradiction because Jesus said that he would deny him three times before the cock crow. But the secret is that, well, it's not really a secret, you know, because you just study the Bible yourself. But the, the interesting thing is, Number one, did you know that there was more than one denial? And I mean, you could even answer it this way. Even if we didn't have the account of John, you could say that, well, you know, were those maids all the same lady? Right? They could have been all different ladies that asked him. Because we're starting to realize now that many people are coming over to Peter and saying, hey, wait a second, you were with him. There's a group saying, hey, but you were with him. There's one person of the group saying, hey, you, you, I, I can tell you're a Galilean. Just again and again, Peter is denying the Lord. So even though Jesus only mentioned that he would deny him three times, there is actually many more denials. But even if you were to add John's account of the denials of Peter, we get a very different story. And we can see here, it even fulfills that uh, Peter denied the Lord three times, even before the first cock crow is mentioned in the gospel accounts. So when we add on John on the end, we see here that there's the damsel at the door as he was walking in, he denied to her. Then there was the group that was standing around the fire, a different fire. Uh, one of the people in that group was Malchus, that servant whose ear got cut off. And then we see the first cock crow. So what is the significance of the other? I mean, it could be that Matthew, Luke and Mark are just giving an account just to show, hey, Jesus did say these things and all of them were fulfilled. But I think the significance of the last cock crow is the crow where Jesus actually looks upon Peter and Peter actually realizes that he has denied the Lord that very same night that Jesus said he would do earlier on in the Garden of Gethsemane, humbling him. And, and this is one of the major reasons why Jesus later, when he's resurrected, asks him whether he loves him three times because there was the three denials that happened prior to the cock crowing. And it was a reminder that, you know, that Peter needs the Lord in order to, um, you know, have that strength and in order to do these things. We can't do it sometimes of our own strength. So I hope that was interesting for you. I don't know if you were ever aware of that contradiction. If you weren't aware of the contradiction, maybe the, the sermon wasn't as interesting for you. If you're aware of it, hopefully that gives you some uh, consolation in knowing that the Bible is perfect. And like, uh, like uh, Kevin preached when he preached about the resurrection, sometimes these things seem like they contradict, but it's just because we don't understand them enough. And there's three takeaways I want you to take away from the sermon. One is that the Bible is perfect. You know, you can trust the Word of God. You can trust the King James Bible. We just need to study it out more and just uh, find out why that these things are said differently and the different accounts. There are many different things in the Bible, many different stories where there could be many different answers for why different things seemingly contradict. But when we study it out, we can see that the Bible is being very specific about how it describes things and we can get a fuller picture of what happens. Um, so the Bible is perfect, you know, you don't have to, it doesn't have any contradictions, you don't have to change what God said uh, just because you don't understand it yet. We just have to uh, try and study and figure it out. Another thing is, is it shows us that even the best of us at times can do things that are very wrong. It shows us that even saved people, I mean, Peter was a saved person. He even got to the point where he was denying the Lord Jesus Christ publicly and multiple times. So if walking in the spirit, if obeying the Lord and, you know, just living for Jesus was just automatic, 
you know, why do we have this account of Peter struggling in the face of adversity to say that he was with Jesus multiple times? But it just goes to show that you can be saved and yet deny that you know Christ out of fear, out of uh, fear of uh, uh, tribulation and trials. Not saying that it's the right thing to do, obviously, but just goes to show that even those of us who are saved are capable of it. And the point I just want to end on is this. Let's uh, go to 1 John 3, verse 18. One thing we can definitely learn from the denials of Peter is that talk is cheap, isn't it? It was so easy for Peter to say, hey, you know what? I will never be offended. I, I will love you to the end. I am willing to die for you. But yet when push came to shove, that was not as easy to do. You know, it's very easy to talk, isn't it? It's very easy to talk the talk and walk, but, but walking the walk is a lot harder. And we need to take this away in our spiritual life where it's so easy for us to say things, isn't it? It's so easy for us to promise things and yet not fulfill that. Like how many times have I heard people say, hey, I'm going to see you at church next Sunday. Or I'm going to see you at soul winning. You know, whether you say, hey, you know, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to do whatever. Let's not be like this in our spiritual life. Yes, this was one big blunder that Peter did. But just like Peter denied the Lord multiple times, in our spiritual life, we do that many times. We, we say we're going to do something and we say it again and again and again and again, but we let our word down. We don't do necessarily what we say. Um, and in uh, 1 John 3, 18, it says here, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So let's just reflect on that. You know, let's not just say things that are easy to be said. You know, if you say something, make sure you do it. Because um, you don't want to be like Peter. You, know, you don't want to be like Peter where you'll say you're going to go to the end of the world for Jesus. But yet when push comes to shove, um, you don't uphold uh, what you said you were going to do. Anyways, I hope that sermon was interesting for you. I know it was a bit more of a sort of a Bible study. Hopefully you, you followed along and this timeline kind of helped. But I'll put this on the website if you want to go over it again and read through the passages again yourself and you can actually see uh, the small differences that are pointed out um, in the Bible.